Many of you have come on this Sunday morning. Thank you. At this point in time, we have the human basis. And this human basis possesses a human mind which has so many abilities and so much potential. Um, so it's very important that we utilize this human mind with all of its potential for something uh, which is lasting and beneficial. And that's why it is important to practice dharma or religion. <coughs> So what is the meaning of uh, Dharma practice or of being a Dharma practitioner? Uh, the meaning of this um, is uh, to have the idea in one's mind um, that like ourselves, um, all sentient beings uh, wish to have happiness. So because all sentient beings wish to have happiness, it's necessary to find the causal factors out for happiness and to find out the causal factors for suffering and try to abandon the causal factors uh, for the unpleasant states and try to take on the practice of behaviors which will lead one to pleasant states. Um, so uh, it's necessary to engage in an analysis to find out what those causal factors are. And if one can produce them, then the ability to be reborn um, in the higher realms as a human demigod and god um, is possible and the ability to achieve nirvana uh, for oneself alone up to unsurpassable true complete enlightenment. All of these are um, possible based on this human uh, mind and its potential. So the meaning of practice um, is to look for the causal factors of um, the things that we uh, desire in the long run and then try to participate in the activities which will bring us to those desired goals. So in the first section um, of the, the text, the lamp for the path to enlightenment for Lord Atisha, uh, he deals with um, the um, uh, particular um, ways in which one can achieve the rebirth um, into the higher realms um, and um, states that first one must have a very stable uh, foundation and refuge, an understanding of the law of cause and effect or karma and its effects and behavior modification based on that understanding then uh, coupled with uh, purification of downfalls through uh, confession of downfalls or uh, through a confession type practice or acknowledgement um, of downfalls um, 
uh, translators know acknowledgement is more of a uh, is a better translation than confession because it's not as loaded as the word confession. So the second, second section of this text, The Lamb for the Path to Enlightenment, deals with the teachings that are shared in common with beings of medium capacity. So the first was beings of small capacity, the second is beings of medium capacity. And uh, these are the lesser vehicle practitioner, or the, or the henionists. Um, and the way that they achieve uh, their goal of liberation for themselves alone is by reliance upon the three higher trainings, the higher training in um, ethical, ethical behavior, the higher training in um, concentration, and the higher uh, training in wisdom. And these higher trainings are also called the highest higher trainings. So one must have the wisdom realizing emptiness that is brought about through utilizing emptiness as the <clears throat> object of observation for one single-pointed concentration practice. And once one um, achieves single points in concentration using um, emptiness as uh, his or her object of observation, then this um, progresses one on the path <coughs> to the state of liberation. Um, so uh, it's necessary for the medium scope practitioner to um, uh, have a practice of the three higher trainings, um, particularly the higher training in wisdom, which uses uh, emptiness um, as its um, uh, topic of analysis, and the concentration, which uses emptiness as its object of observation, and ethical behavior in order to build a foundation for the, those two. <laughs> So how does this work? Um, how is this process possible? Um, it's through the recognition um, uh, that um, phenomena are not truly established or are not truly existent, which serves as an antidote to the disturbing uh, emotions or to the afflictions. So um, the um, mistaken view is the view that um, um, all phenomena are truly established. And then through recognition of this mistaken view, then one grasps at true existence. So it's the um, grasping at true existence which must be abandoned and the um, uh, antithesis of that or opposite of that which is the understanding of the lack of um, true existence or lack of true establishment serves as an antidote and allows one to uh, achieve eventually achieve liberation because of the, the ability to dispel mistaken views <laughs> So if one um, uses emptiness uh, or the um, uh, nature of reality as the object of observation for his or her single-pointed concentration, um, then this slowly uh, abandons the uh, negative afflictions and allows one to um, slowly achieve the state of liberation or the state of nirvana. Um, it's through um, dependence or reliance upon um, the um, wisdom, uh, the realization of emptiness. <laughs> So it is possible um, for the wisdom realizing emptiness to serve as an antidote to the afflictive obstructions. And the afflictive obstructions um, are the affliction, the coarse afflictions, um, that's a loose, it's really translation, it's called afflictive obstructions. 
um, uh, can be abandoned. And once those afflictive obstructions are abandoned, one can achieve the state of liberation or nirvana. But there are still the uh, remainder of the imprints of those actual imprints, or the uh, afflictive obstructions. Um, and those are the obstructions to omniscience. And those cannot be eradicated by reliance up, uh, solely upon um, uh, the wisdom realizing emptiness. That must be, the wisdom realizing emptiness must be coupled with method, which is bodhi, in this particular case bodhicitta. Um, and this is what differentiates the medium scope with the great scope. The great scope um, includes all of the topics of the medium scope, but also has the, at the root of it, the mind that aspires to enlightenment or bodhicitta. So if one couples the wisdom realizing emptiness with the mind that aspires to enlightenment or bodhicitta, then it becomes possible for he or she to eradicate the obstructions to omniscience, which are the imprints of the afflictive obstructions that are still left over. And once those are eradicated, then he or she will become a complete Buddha. Um, so uh, the only way uh, one can achieve the complete status is through um, having a union of method and wisdom or a union of the wisdom realizing emptiness and the mind that aspires to enlightenment um, and various other uh, meritorious activities which fall into the category of method. <laughs> <coughs> so how does one cultivate the mind that aspires to enlightenment? This cultivation takes place um, through um, uh, two different um, uh, lineages of instruction. Uh, the first, um, the seven-point cause and effect for achieving bodhicitta or uh, for achieving the realization of bodhicitta, and the second, um, equalizing and exchanging self and others. These are two um, causal vehicles that will lead one to the realization of bodhicitta. So, uh, one, once one cultivates the mind that aspires to enlightenment or bodhicitta, um, at that point, uh, he or she can engage in two different uh, practices, or two different vehicle, vehicles of practice, one being the perfection vehicle and the other being the tantric vehicle or the um, esoteric vehicle. Um, so these uh, two vehicles can be practiced um, if one generates the mind that aspires to enlightenment or bodhicitta. <laughs> So, um, in the perfection vehicle, when we're speaking of the perfection vehicle, um, it's necessary for uh, the practitioner to engage in the three higher trainings. And the three higher trainings are the highest higher trainings in ethics, the highest higher training in concentration, and the highest higher training in wisdom. Um, we've already gone over the highest higher training in ethics and the highest higher training in concentration. And we've arrived at the section which gives explanation of the highest higher training in wisdom. So that's where we will start from today. <laughs> Tambo <laughs> So uh, there, will, there are seven reasons um, for the uh, necessity of this wisdom realizing emptiness, or the wisdom, the high, uh, I'm sorry, the highest higher training in wisdom. Um, and the first is that 
without the highest higher training and wisdom, it is not possible to eradicate even the afflictive obstructions, um, and it's not possible to eradicate um, even the imprints of those, um, um, because the afflictive obstructions themselves cannot be eradicated. So the first reason um, for the um, uh, importance of the highest higher training and wisdom is that the afflictive obstructions cannot be eradicated, nor can their imprints. So, second, the Nipa. Then a the dun mingare. Dun kalikalje mo. The the dun mingare. Sachi logro. Sachi. 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 Then the dun dondagare. The sherap sherap che lapa. Sherap lapa lapa visu dala sachi dun di dun. Sherap lapa gures. Sherap lapa chambi di gomare. Tashi ni ka gures. Okay, two channels. The Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that I translated correctly. So there are these seven sections um, relative to the importance of wisdom, uh, the highest higher training in wisdom. So the first is one that was explained. The second is that wisdom alone um, cannot uh, allow one to eradicate the um, uh, um, Afflict, um, obstructions to omniscience. It's necessary uh, to um, uh, couple that wisdom with method um, or the mind that aspires to enlightenment in order to achieve the complete state of Buddhahood. So the second is wisdom alone is not sufficient. <laughs> Mm. So the third uh, section is um, what are the divisions or meaning of uh, the wisdom and what are the divisions or meaning of the method um, which um, are necessary to have a union of in order to achieve the goal. And one thing I forgot to translate before is um, just when, for the previous one, where it's uh, not sufficient to have only emptiness, uh, the quote um, previously mentioned from the Madhyamika Avatar is that the golden goose cannot fly over the ocean to the other side without the two wings, just like the practitioner cannot go to the other side of cyclic existence without the two wings of method and wisdom. Forty-eight. Uh, so I believe that we've arrived at the forty-eighth um, stanza in the English. Forty-four. Oh, I'm sorry, forty-four. Ah, sorry, sorry. Forty-four. That's four and eight sound very similar in Tibetan. Um, so uh, we've arrived at forty-four, and. What did you do, you learn, Maria? Let me just find it in my Okay, so at 44 it says, To eliminate doubts concerning what is called wisdom and what uh, skillful means, I shall make clear the difference between skillful means and wisdom. And here this is basically what was previously described. Um, what are the divisions of uh, method? Uh, what is the um, nature of or definition of method? What are the divisions of wisdom and the nature of or definition of wisdom? Um, so here, the reason that uh, the great master is uh, stating that he is going to explain them is to eliminate any doubts um, in the practitioner's mind. So um, in order to eliminate doubts, it's necessary to have an understanding of these things. Um, so this is uh, um, here. Uh, here, uh, Atisha states that he shall make a clear difference between skillful means and wisdom by uh, explaining the two carefully. 
Oje da dene ma jeju jeju sheje dene sheje rwa shinga rwa shinga dele da to kar to kar resna to sekin de kar shugor chuzu juku ni jina de zu zugu la jin juje zugu ju del to sumar de shin pashin jugu na ne to kaze yo are shero kaze yo are sna chero je pare shin ba de ne yo sun je rwa chero je pare de shin ba mai bi pashin to manga yo ro jimba chuji zo ba santen tenga de tore sto chero pare shin bon bi jimbi pare shin la su ki ju na ta je da jawana je to su me de o de su do shin do na ne chero je pa shin mai bi a chero je pa shin de jimbi pa shin ta mo ga de tore sto so uh, in 45 it says apart from the perfection of wisdom all virtuous practices such as the perfection of giving are described as ascribed as skillful means by the victorious ones so here uh, when we're speaking of um, the six the six perfections um, or the six um, um, uh, pra uh, the, the six practices uh, to take one to the other side um, are, is a more literal translation. So the six practices, um, when we look at the first five of those practices, the uh, perfection of generosity, perfection of ethics, the perfection of uh, patience, the perfection of effort, and the perfection of concentration, um, all of these five fall into the category of, uh, wis of method. Uh, so here where it says skillful means, this is referring to method. Um, so the final one of the six perfections obviously is wisdom and the perfection of wisdom. Um, so, uh, the f so here Atisha states that all virtuous practices such as the perfection of giving, here such as refers to uh, also the other four um, of the um, uh, five uh, of five perfections which fall into the category of method. <laughs> Shiraji Pashi Mahimbi Pashi Tamanga Tauris. Tauimbi Jusen Karasana, Chuzo Jukuni is another two Zogula Jin Jujiri. I forgot one thing, Rimche understood in English. <laughs> so, um, so, and what is the, what does the um, actual method produce? The method um, produces the form body. Um, or the uh, robokaya. Um, so the form body is produced by method. So the first five perfections um, uh, uh, which uh, one can engage in fall into the category of method. So this method creates the actual form body or robokaya. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So the wisdom realizing emptiness um, actu actually uh, creates the collection of exalted wisdom. The collection of exalted wisdom produces the dharmakaya or the actual truth body. Um, so uh, this is what the um, wisdom realizing emptiness causes. And just quickly to uh, go back for anyone who's writing this down, the um, method causes the robokaya or form body, and wisdom causes the dharmakaya or truth body. Then tiba chimbo ke jil tiba ni chuchut lan kaus thashi ni mete vyasu. Drebi ikasu chuzu chuku ni dharmakaya or robokaya ribe. Jil tiba ni so uh, it is stated that the uh, there are two truths and um, uh, two paths of method and wisdom, um, and through the two paths of uh, method and wisdom, lam tapshe ni dene je demba ni je demba ni je demba ni dero lab sar je demba ni lab absolu lab sar compassion truth ni dero absolu shekin tuni du shero dero te yo sunro ta to to go ni ale to to ge go do demba le mi go rwa je demba ni lang ko so mete yo sun te inde bodul kar yo go re sa je de chuku dan zo ko dama ka so um, the two truths 
um, of conventional truth and ultimate truth um, uh, and the, the two paths of method and wisdom um, produce the actual Buddhahood and two bodies. So here the meaning of this is the two truths of, uh, of conventional and ultimate truth. Um, method falls into the category of conventional truth. Wisdom falls into the category of ultimate truth. And the paths, engaging in the paths of this union of method and wisdom produces the two bodies. Um, so this is a, was stated in scripture. Um, the two bodies being the form body um, and the truth body or the robokaya and the dharmakaya. Mm -hmm. So number 46 uh, um, states, whoever under the influence of familiarity with skillful means cultivates wisdom will click quickly attain enlightenment, not just by meditating on selflessness. So here it says, whoever under the influence of familiarity, um, let me just check the Tibetan real quick. Okay, so here um, in the Tibetan, they use the word gom. So familiarity here uh, is also meditation, um, but the more literal translation um, isn't meditation, it's familiarization. So this is why uh, Ruth Sonam used familiarity, because it's a better translation. Uh, but I just wanted to make it clear for people who didn't know that, because um, that's an English thing. So whoever under the influence of familiarity with skillful means cultivates wisdom will quickly attain enlightenment, not just by meditating on selflessness. So here it states that the practitioner who um, um, uh, under the influence of meditation uh, or familiarity with skillful means uh, cultivates wisdom. So if one uh, has method and wisdom together, uh, he or she will quickly attain enlightenment. Um, so reliance upon just wisdom or just meditating on selflessness is not sufficient. Um, so this is why it states not just by meditating on selflessness. It's necessary to have a union of method and wisdom, not just wisdom. So here, the next section um, uh, is also dealing with wisdom. And first, we're going to just read through these stanzas. Uh, 47. <laughs> Understanding <laughs> emptiness of inherent existence through realizing that the aggregates, constituents, and sources are not produced is described as wisdom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tony <laughs> Omatanji 
So um, here um, it says understanding emptiness of inherent existence through realizing that the aggregates, so the five aggregates, the six constituents, and the uh, juni sources, juni. The Okay. Um, so <coughs> here the aggregates are the five aggregates, the six constituents, and the twelve sources. Um, so here this refers to the five aggregates. Um, and the six constituents. The twelve sources refer to the um, eye source, uh, the um, the miki wambo, nai wambo, che, the eye source, eye source, sense power. Actually, they sense call it sense, sense power. It's more a more literal translation um, is eye sense power, nose sense power, tongue sense power, tactile bar body sense power, eye ear nose. What did I miss? Uh, uh, mouth, uh, mouth or tasting sense power, and um, body sense power. The mind sense power. And the mind sense power. So those are the six. And then um, the, there are six sources. So the forms or the sources are the actual object of the smelling. So the um, eye source, uh, the nose source, the ear source, the tongue source, the tactile source, and the mental source. Um, so these are the objects of the actual powers. So they're. Um, um, it's in the logic primer. There's a whole section on these things. If one wants to look further um, about the meaning of these, um, just a translator's note, you can find it in Debate in Tibetan Buddhism. Can, can you enumerate the um, aggregates, the constituents, and the sources one more time? Uh, there are five aggregates, six constituents, and twelve sources. Rinpoche didn't list the aggregates. Okay. They just gave numbers. He get, listed the sources, but didn't list the uh, um, constituents and so forth. Um, so, uh, so when we speak of uh, selflessness here, um, and the sources are not uh, produced, according to the um, Madhyamika Prasangika school, um, there are two kinds of selflessness. There is selflessness of person and selflessness of phenomena. Um, so these are the two different kinds of selflessness according to the middle way consequence school. Uh, the selflessness of person uh, refers to the emptiness or the lack of true establishment of sentient beings, for instance, or of beings, because, uh, yeah, of beings. Um, so the lack of the true establishment or true existence of beings. Um, so this is the selflessness of person. Selflessness of phenomenon refers to anything that is not person, um, which is necessarily phenomena. So here, that which is not person and is necessarily phenomena, um, the emptiness of that object falls into the category. Um, the emptiness of any of those objects is the selflessness of phenomena. So this is the distinction between the two. One is a being um, and the other is non-being. Um, so this is how we differentiate selflessness, um, being and non-being. Tactile 
So the icon, for instance, when we look at the um, six uh, sense powers and the um, six sources, um, the eye, con for instance, the eye consciousness um, has um, uh, the eye sense power, and it and it apprehends um, the the source of its apprehension is form, um, uh, such as colors and shapes. Um, so the source of the um, the object of apprehension of the um, the um, eye consciousness, which is powered by the eye sense power, is a form which would be a color or a shape. Um, the uh, ear consciousness, which is powered by the ear sense power, um, apprehends um, a hearing um, source, so any sort of hearing. So um, this is the way that uh, these these are in, um, break down in their functions. It so they're hearing. <laughs> So this is a, a hearing source, which the bell ringing itself is the hearing source, the uh, dry geche, um, the hearing source. Um, so um, this is the basic meaning, and, and we will use the word etc. Rinpoche used that for the rest of them. Um, so there is the, um, when we look at consciousness, there are the six consciousness, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, tactile consciousness, and mental consciousness. And the six sense powers, which are connected to those six consciousness, the um, eye sense power, the nose sense power, the ear sense power, the tongue sense power, the body or tactile sense power, and the mental sense power. And they, uh, the sense powers which power the consciousness have the six apprehensions or objects of apprehension or six sources and those sources are the um, form source, the hearing source, the smelling source, the touching source, the tasting source and the mental source. Um, so mental imagery and so forth, so mental source. Um, so uh, this is uh, the, what is meant by um, the six sources and six powers which equal twelve. Mm. The <laughs> Okay. Less so. Okay, so um, the uh, six, the five aggregates themselves and the twelve, um, the uh, twelve sources um, uh, fall into the category of uh, f uh, phenomena which is not uh, being or person. So, um, do, are these uh, twelve, what category do these twelve sources fall into? They call it, fall into the category of phenomena which is not person. It is not person, um, therefore it falls into the category of uh, the selflessness of phenomena. So the, um, selflessness of those objects fall into the category of selflessness of phenomena because those objects are not being. And if they are not being, they are necessarily not selflessness of person. Um, so they, if it is not selflessness of person and it is phenomena, it is necessarily selflessness of phenomena. So this is the um, reason for this and this is the category that the five aggregates, the six constituents and the twelve sources fall into. Can't do it, 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 can't do it
Mm. Okay, the ne the kam juje juje. Okay, so when we <coughs> when we look at a more literal enumeration, um, the aggregates are five. The constituents can be divided into eighteen um, actual categories of constituents. Jie jie juni, jie jie juni, pombo kam. Eighteen, twelve, eighteen, juje. Kam juje. Eighteen. Pombo paiget kam juje. So the um, then the uh, sources are the twelve, and that was the twelve that were previously explained, the six and six. Uh, so the the constituents themselves will be eighteen constituents. Make your ombo, nine ombo, nine ombo, ji ombo, lazy ombo, yeji ombo, that get done, Zaroa. The truth, the letter, then ombi contro, ombi contro is. Ombi com, Drew, the sense of ombi com. Constituent, ombi com, constituent. Ombi, okay. Sorcerer, sorcerer, true, Roa. Sense power. Sense of all true, Jay. Then by now, she's a contro. Make your number sheba, conscious in the truth, true. Make your number sheba. Nai nobre sheba, Thai nobre sheba, Chi nobre sheba, Luigi nobre sheba, Yiji nobre sheba. Six conscious in it. No, she jagu, mother. Junior is one. Then eh? Then the truth is Zuji, Dai Jesi, the Zul Zuji Khan, Zuji Jesi, Zuji Khan's me, Dai Jesi, Dai Khan. Then Kanga double it. Tama drew the less Khan to Jesi drews an end degree, Khan drews an end jibarita. So <clears throat> here the constituents are divided, um, if we do it literally, into the constituent, uh, the six constituents of the sense powers. So as that's basically meaning the eye sense power, ear sense power, nose sense power, tongue sense power, body sense power, and mental sense power. Um, so the six constituents of sense power, the six constituents of um, consciousness, so the eye consciousness, uh, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, uh, tongue consciousness, tactile or body consciousness, and mental consciousness, and then the six sources, which we just went over, uh, the constituent of the six sources uh, that we just went over, the um, uh, form source, get you dry, get you dry, get you form source, the um, sound source, the uh, smell source, get you row, get you the tasting source, rejai, get you the tactile. Um, source and the um, mind source, uh, um, so uh, mental uh, image or s image source. I think is a more image source of imagery, something like that. Image is the kind of idea we want with the mental source. Um, it's more the words more of an image. Um, but anyway, that's just a side note. My anal translation. Uh, okay, so that is the uh, eighteen. Um, constituents. What the constituents of the so if uh, this is the reason it's necessary to study the logic primer, um, because all of these things are explained thoroughly in the logic primer. Mm. So the first two subjects of study are the logic primer, um, and then the mind and awareness, low rig. Um, and we can find uh, in these first two things that are studied, we can find it, the reason for it right here in uh, Atisha's text because he makes mention of it in a condensed format and, and assuming that the reader would have already understood all of those other things because this is far more advanced than those. <laughs> So there are these two types of selflessness. So these um, five aggregates, the uh, 18 constituents, the six sources, um, uh, all of these things 
um, fall into the category of selflessness of phenomena. Or selflessness of phenomena, which is necessarily not a person or not a being. So um, if uh, these had been person uh, or, or a, had been a person or being or persons or beings, um, then it would fall into the category of selflessness of person. Um, so that's how you differentiate between selflessness of person and selflessness of phenomena. Anything which is a uh, phenomenon but necessarily not person um, has selflessness of phenomena. <coughs> で、そんごや、ごばかるせな、あの、中段かざでばとばんじみてんじんで、え、のるです。てき、中しばれてんにょ、もちれさね、コアルクでです。おわてたび、コアれ、コアれ、中しとあの、三時期だめにそんばです。
قرص پاپ هم بین بره فرم فرم کاسو رو و جزر دپی کازا سنا پوم گایو رو زوج کازا پوم گایو رو زوم کازا ل پوم جی ما دیو اوکی کوشنز ناو بین انسر دی ام Uh, form, there are um, uh, three different realms. Um, there's the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless mm-hmm. realm. Desire realm beings have five aggregates. Form realm beings have five aggregates. The formless realm beings do not have five aggregates. They only have four aggregates. They don't have form aggregate because they're in the formless realm. So they only have four aggregates. So. So the meaning of this is, why is it say among the five aggregates in the definition of person or being? The reason is because the formless realm uh, um, inhabitants are beings our person, but they only have four aggregates. They do not have all five aggregates. So this is the reason in the Tibetan it says karung, and in English this means among, I have among the five aggregates, or um, any of, or something like that. Among is how they always translate it. It's a little awkward. So among the five aggregates. Um, so this is the reason for this. Rinpoche, karmani, then in lots of gom. Okay. ジェジェドゥチュジェジェワメバトゥジェワメバサナチワヨアレスデンバトゥビチワヨマレラジンジトゥビチワヨマレスラジンジトゥビチワメバトゥビシェロテヨソンレスウォッツソンマレシェロチ
um, which we hold, which one holds, is that the aggregates um, are truly established, and that the constituents are truly established, and that the tr the sources are truly established. Having the opposite understanding of this is understanding that the aggregates are not truly established and the constituents are not truly established and the sources are not truly established or not truly existent. So here the understanding of this is called wisdom, is described as wisdom. So here this is the um, meaning of wisdom according to this text. Mozumtomato <laughs> Hearing, reflection, meditation, reflection. <clears throat> so we at this point don't have clairvoyance. Um, so we can't just directly perceive things. Um, we have to rely upon intellect. We have to rely upon analysis uh, in order to um, uh, understand these things. We have to have, use logic. Um, and if we use logic and we engage in analysis, then we, have, we can um, gain the wisdom um, which arises through reflection. Um, and then once we have the wisdom which arises from reflection, which is after the wisdom that uh, arises from hearing, once we have that, then we've arrived at the state of inferential uh, prime cognition or um, inferential valid cognition, jpagsema. Um, so uh, from there, we can then um, turn, convert that wisdom into the wisdom realized through meditation. Um, so the reflection um, brings us to the state of inferential prime cognition or inferential valid cognition. Um, and then uh, the next step is the uh, actual meditation itself. Um, so uh, the wisdom arisen from uh, meditation. Mm. So we're going to arrive and we will um, come to uh, many explanations um, in the future of uh, this emptiness or of the lack of true establishment. And uh, we can find um, many texts which have explanations of this or analysis of this. Many texts such as the Mulya Madhyamika Karika um, by Nagarjuna, the, um, which is called the entrance to the, uh, the Tsawa Sherap, Mulya Madhyamika Karika. The root wisdom uh, is the text by Nagarjuna, the root of wisdom. It's called something else, but it's the Mulya Madhyamika Karika in Sanskrit. and. Uh, 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 then the, also the um, Madhyamika Avatara by Chandrakirti and the and Sutra of the Dora. Heart of Transcendent Knowledge. Um, in the Heart Sutra we can find it. In Shanti Deva's text, the Bodhichara Avatara, there's a ninth chapter on wisdom. So all of um, uh, these uh, particular texts give explanation of um, the, uh, the wisdom, but the wisdom particular to the Madhyamika Prasangika. Okay. Do you have to make that? Oh, the Karmangayare. Okay. okay. So So when we speak of the emptiness um, and we speak of um, the five aggregates, the wisdom that understands this, um, we can engage in an analysis that uh, is as follows. We can um, try to find out where I 
is. Um, so we say I, uh, we <coughs> refer to ourselves. When I say I, I'm talking about I, Jeff, I. We will look for this I. Is um, Jeff, uh, or is the I my foot? Is the I my leg? Is the I my head? Is the I my hand? Um, so once one tries to find out where this I abides, um, it will not be possible to find out. So one will arrive at the conclusion that the I is not truly established. The I is not exclusive. The I is not truly existence. It um, relies upon other factors. Uh, is our happiness or our suffering I? Where am I? So this is what we need to think. But maybe it's possible if we think this way, then we will come up with the idea that we don't exist. But this is not sufficient because I get sick and I don't feel well and I have suffering and I have happiness. So these things do happen. So we can't state that the I is non-existent, that there is no existent, uh, there is a non-existent being here. We cannot state that because this, non, this being, um, uh, this I, perceives things and has emotions and so forth. So where is this I? This I is nominally designated or imputed upon a collection of five aggregates but is not exclusive of them. So there are uh, the five aggregates which are the collection and then the I is nominally designated or posited on that collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less so. so it's very similar to a mirror, for instance. When we have a mirror um, and we look at a mirror, then we'll see a picture of our face in the mirror. But the mirror itself does not hold us or does not hold the eye. It is just a reflection of um, ourselves in that actual mirror. So it's a picture. Um, of ourselves. So that picture itself is not the I. It's independence upon the collection of the perception of the picture and the actual uh, mirror itself which is giving the reflection of it which allows the picture to take place. All of these things coming together to create a collection. The I itself is very similar to the, the uh, mirror because this I is dependent upon a collection of the aggregates that we nominally designate so this or that on. Chapter Chu Tzu Ju Chi Dan Karma Jung Ah Gom Jat. So, so um, this is very good. Slowly, you will understand these things.